So what I'd like to do in this talk is uh, to present a few things that uh, we have done. And this is a talk, in, it's kind of a selfish talk because I'm interested in feedback. So uh, contrary to my usual habit, I'm going to try not to talk too much because I'm, uh, I'm actually looking for, for, for feedback. We've developed a number of tools in an area that I think is really important. And we're thinking of uh, productizing these uh, tools of, of going to, to market, if you like. We being the uh, people who are uh, listed with me here, with uh, an extra parenthesis. And, um, and, but we don't exactly know in what direction to go because uh, basically my idea uh, as a nerd, if you like, as a, as a techie, was that there was, a <coughs> there was a very important problem to be solved. And it, it's an exciting problem. It, it's uh, a, a good source of, or endless source of papers, uh, even of formal models and so on. And, uh, and in the end, we've, when we started talking to industry about it, we got the impression that people were not that excited. Or pro you know, if you're a doctor and people are not sick, uh, tell you they're not sick. It doesn't matter whether they're sick or not. If they tell you they're not sick, you don't have much of a business. Uh, and in software engineering, if you want to, 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 to offer something, there needs to be a pain point somewhere. Like if people don't feel the pain, they're, they're not interested in, in your stuff. You're solving a problem that they don't, that they don't have. And it's, kind of, it's a little bit the impression I got in talking to industry, but then it turned out something else we were doing as a result of that work uh, triggered uh, much more uh, reactions. And, and so I'm going to present both, and I'm really interested in your uh, feedback on, on this. So I'm going to come back to this uh, list of questions uh, at the end. Uh, uh, so I'll just show them briefly. Uh, now, uh, uh, this is the kind of thing I'm interested in. What challenges are you facing in software development? Are your teams distributed? If they're distributed, actually, even if they're not distributed, is your process collaborative? Is every developer in his or her little corner, or do people really collaborate or not? How do software innovations propagate? Do you encounter merge conflicts? I'm going to come back to merge conflicts. Do you end up doing uh, copy paste, you know, like uh, 10 million line code uh, that, that has uh, 5 million lines and then this almost the same 5 million lines are uh, uh, slightly modified? Uh, do you have deployment issues? So this is the kind of thing that I'm uh, interested in uh, having the answers uh, for, for from practitioners. <coughs> so the context is distributed development. Right? Uh, dist developers used to be like this, you know, everyone under the same roof. Nowadays it's more like this. Okay. Uh, all over the place, uh, the people communicating through the internet. So that's our case, for example, in, if I put my company here, Eiffel uh, Software, which is based in Santa Barbara, California, has developers there, uh, has uh, people in Argentina, uh, me, <laughs> mostly in Zurich, uh, people in France, uh, Moscow, and until recently, Shanghai. So, how, how do you, uh, and this is the result of historical circumstances. Uh, there's no need to justify it. Actually, you know, I teach a course on these things, on distributed software development, as I mentioned yesterday, and uh, you know, distributed in our source software engineering, and uh, okay, almost the first slide of the course is, here's the first rule of distributed development, don't do it. Okay. The, if you have a choice, this is always better, uh, the first one. It's always better. The problem is that most, much of the time you don't have a choice. The, the talent is not necessarily all in the same place, uh, I'm not even mentioning the economic aspect. So you end up with a situation like this, and I would say for us it works uh, relatively well, but we, it's been hard to, to make everything work together also. Most of the people uh, who are there have been uh, previously in Santa Barbara, and so that helps when you actually have met someone, you know what he or she looks like, uh, you, you, it, it completely changes things. I wouldn't, well, how many people are there overall? It's not a big team. It's about uh, 15 people together. 15, 20, uh, between 15 and 20. <coughs> so another experience that we've had is this course that I mentioned, a dose uh, which with a project that is distributed among a number of universities with basically uh, three teams of two or three students each, students each, uh, each in a different institution collaborating. So we have done this for something like 12 years now. We have an enormous amount of data from which we are able to infer some, I think, interesting conclusions. Um, and we've developed tools about which I'm going to, to talk. Uh, another case study is the MOOC that I mentioned yesterday. Actually, the MOOC, so MOOC is Massive Online 
open course, or open online course, and we have gone full steam ahead into this because we think we have good teaching and uh, out of generosity we want the world to, to benefit from, from, from it. And so I've put my introductory programming course on edX, which is one of the uh, main platforms. The other one is uh, Coursera. And we, it's, a, it's a programming course, right? It's not, it's not a course about uh, Greek, uh, <coughs> Greek archaeology. Uh, and so people have to program, and we didn't just want to give them programming exercises and, uh, well, fill in the program here. We wanted actually, them actually to be able to execute, I mean, compile, uh, test, uh, execute their program and see what they were doing. And I'm going to come to that later on. So we basically developed, well, we did a, a whole sequence of tools. The most important ones are Cloud Studio, which was the original focus, and now Codeboard. Um, I'm speaking very fast because I, I really want to come to, to the demos of these tools, which I think are the, uh, are the important uh, things. So, but I can speak actually even faster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just keeping an eye on the one. So, for the issue that really uh, turned me on initially, the thing, uh, you know, as a nerd, as a computer scientist, uh, as a programmer, and as a computer science researcher, I think this uh, configuration management is a shame. I mean, it's an absolute shame. We, we should never have to do configuration management. Well, I should say, of course, that the first thing I teach, one of the first things I teach in my software engineering courses is, of course, software configuration management. Because if the alternative is what people were doing 20 years ago, you know, everyone messing up with everyone else's code, then, of course, we want configuration management. So things like uh, CVS and then subversions, uh, subversion and then Git, uh, Git and so on have been major advances and that's one of the things that the uh, software industry has learned. But I think we can do better. So the idea is that, you know, I'm working on my own little corner, I check out uh, some, uh, so, some stuff. So this is actually the repository. Uh, I check out some stuff, I start working on it, and then someone else does the same and we, we commit. So there's the process of update and uh, commit, check out and uh, check in by 11, by the way. Uh, check out is by 11 <laughs> this morning. Um, and so this, re this leads to all kinds of problems. So when will the other team come in their work? I'm waiting for them. Are, did you see the changes I made? It looks like you're working on the same thing and you're ignoring that I've actually improved this already. Uh, but when will that implementation be ready? I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Oh, <laughs> you messed up if you complete part X of the implementation. And of course, the, the worst, which is not even here, which is, oh, you just changed something that I had changed, and now uh, we have to get into this horrible situation <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> of, of reconciling stuff. So you don't see it because it's too small, but you know, I, I'm much closer and I see it, and I also don't, uh, I also, it's also so messy to me, and I also don't understand it, uh, however close I am. So this is the absolute catastrophe. You know, you're happy, you're working on your own little piece of the code, or you think it's your only piece of the code, and then merge, and that's when the trouble begins, the marriages dissolve, and so on. So, this is not the right way to do it, okay? The, the right way to do it has been pointed to us, I think, by things like the wiki, non-software engineering uh, uh, advances, things like wiki and Google Doc. If you are on Google Doc, uh, this is just one of my uh, brilliant papers, uh, then, what, yeah, yeah, I should have shown this, so this is also a, yeah, this is a wiki. The, the point is that there is no commit. The, well, the only commit is save, right? So commit is there, but well, I should, yeah, but there is no update, right? You don't you don't you don't say I'm checking this out. Uh, the world beware! Don't touch it. You just do what you have to do, and then there's there are very and then this big brother, which is watching over your shoulder. So you can go to uh, this tab here somewhere, uh, history, and, and then you see everything that you've done. So you, uh, the history is done for you. You don't have to say, now it's version so-and-so, or I'm checking out, I'm commi committing, uh, updating and committing. There's some, some, some tool taking care of this for you. And yeah, I know, I'm such a problem. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't even try, don't, 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 don't even try. Uh, the, and then, the uh, that, that's relatively uh, the easy part, you know, keeping, tra keeping track of the history. The part that is really uh, smart, and Google Doc was pretty bad initially, and now it's become very, very sophisticated, is reconciling change silently, change silently, because in fact, most of the time, 
Well, much of the time, there's no real conflict, yeah? Uh, I've changed paragraph A, you have changed paragraph 2, or even I've changed sentence 1, you've changed sentence 2, and more or less the tool can uh, reconcile these changes without making too much fuss. And to me, this is the future. And we want, so our first project was to do this for software engineering to enable people to work collaboratively, like for example, our people at uh, IFO Software, to work collaboratively on, uh, on the same uh, piece of code, on the same uh, repository of code, and, uh, and have tools behind to help them. So this is what we have done with uh, Cloud Studio. And you know, if I'd given this talk six months ago or a year ago, this is what I would have emphasized, this notion which, I've, which I find very powerful of view. So I'm working on my part of the code, on my view of the code, actually, I'm, I shouldn't say my part of the code because I'm working on the entire code, potentially, and I decide what I want to, uh, to see. For example, uh, root is working on, so here we're not called root, and Bertrand, we are called, called I think, Christian and Al, but uh, we, we can trans transpose. So I, I, I may decide to see in real time everything that she does, or I may decide to ignore her completely I, for, for a while, you know, because I don't want to be bothered by knowing by, by uh, what everyone does on the team, so I want to concentrate on one particular view. And then the tools are there to warn me that is a ch that is a conflict. Most of the time there is no conflict, right? Most of the time we're actually dividing the work between ourselves. And but one of the, once in a while there's going to be something that appears in red. Or uh, actually, orange means uh, adjective of the changes, and red means aha, watch out, you're uh, you're changing this uh, routine, this method, and root is also routine on that method. Maybe you should pick up your phone and, and, and talk to her, right? Because you're going to be in trouble. So it's the general idea of awareness. You know, prevention is always better than cure, and this is exactly the case here uh, for this uh, general proverb. It's much better to catch potential conflicts. Uh, while uh, before they have, they have become real conflicts. And so we've built this tool, um, uh, Cloud Studio, which makes this possible. And then we go to, to industry, and people tell us, well, we don't have that problem. Actually, I don't believe them. I, I, I think they have the problem that either we're talking to the wrong people, the, the managers, and they don't really see what's happening in, in the trenches, or they don't want to, to admit it. I don't know, it's my, my, uh, my interpretation, but clearly people we've uh, talked to tell us we don't have major merge issues. <clears throat> and so seeing this, we've start, we started putting the emphasis on something else, which is the teaching aspect. And that's really what I want to talk about for, for the remainder of this presentation and the reason I was talking so fast. Maybe because I really want, this is more recent and it's not, uh, there's no obvious business behind it, but it, it, it seems useful and interesting, at least that's for you to, uh, to, uh, to tell me. So <coughs> this, we use this for teaching, uh, particularly uh, programming teaching, of course, that's, what, that's our business. We use it for tutorials, and we, and we can integrate it in MOOCs. So let me actually uh, show you the, to, uh, the tutorial part f first. <coughs> so let's see. Uh, since the, <coughs> link, yeah, the connection is not so fast, I've, pre I've preloaded a few pages, but that's not one of them, so I have to find it. To auto proof tutorial, that's what I'm Googling. This is uh, also an opportunity to, to boast a little bit about our um, program verification research. So we have developed this environment. I mentioned it very briefly at the beginning yesterday, or to prove. It's a program proving environment, and we are really trying to make it realistic. That is to say, to, to make it uh, uh, able to, uh, to, to verify real <coughs> programs and model programs, not, not just programs that are written in some kind of Pascal subset which has been devised ju just for that, but uh, the, these are Eiffel programs with everything, uh, classes, dynamic allocation, 
multiple inheritance, uh, functional programming features, and, and everything. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to, to get into the details uh, of uh, autoproof. Actually, yeah, what, <coughs> just to say one more thing about it, is that a major achievement uh, to date is that we, uh, specifically a PhD student called Nadia Palikarpova, uh, have uh, verified an entire data structure library. So it's the Eiffel Base 2 library, it's queues and stacks and uh, arrays and uh, binary search trees, you know, what I like to call knuthware, or, or, or that kind of stuff. And uh, it's been completely verified, and completely proven correct, which I don't think, it, I, I've never, never seen anything similar uh, anyway. Okay, so you know, we, we take one of these, and it, this is from the tutorial, and you can see some code with the preconditions, <coughs> although this is a tutorial, right? So, so you have to fill in your, 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 uh, your stuff. I'm not going to do it, so it's not going to verify. Definitely, let me say, for example, here that uh, a dot count, uh, the size of the array, you know, this is, a, this is an array, has to be at least equal to one. Okay, it's not going to be enough, but then I can click verify, and the prover, uh, which is, by the way, internally based on, for those of you who are in software verification, on uh, Boogie from Microsoft uh, Research. So we, it, this is one of the great things about working in verification today, is that we, one doesn't have to, to, to start from, uh, from, from scratch. They, uh, they stick. This is the difference with even five years ago. Uh, so, yeah. <coughs> and uh, you, yeah, here you can see the verification. Uh, some stuff verifies, some, uh, but some, some stuff doesn't verify because this is the tutorial. You have to fill in the, the contracts in order for the, uh, uh, for, for the programs to verify, which, which I haven't done. I, I, I filled in just one precondition. But this is an application of the code board technology because behind this, there's the whole machinery, there's the whole tool suite of uh, I, the iPhone compiler, iPhone Studio, the, uh, the, the Alpha iPhone runtime, and then uh, Boogie from Microsoft Research, which relies on Z3 from Microsoft Research, and then on, on top of it, our autoproof uh, tool. And it, 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 actually, now, nowadays, when we tell people to, to learn, when people ask us how to learn autoproof, we tell them don't even bother <coughs> initially <coughs> installing anything, just go to this page and, and follow the tutorial, and as you go through the tutorial, do the exercises online. So okay. now, uh, let me come back to introductory programming. Okay. For introductory programming, you can, sorry, this is already the conclusion slide, so the good news is that there is no, there's no other slide, or we'll, we'll just one more. Um, okay, this is Internet Explorer, that's not what I want to. Um, Okay, codeboard.io. Yeah, and I'm going to log in. <coughs> ah, just, oh, uh, it didn't click, but it clicked for me. Okay, I'm located in Switzerland. Thanks and congratulations for your insights. Okay. And I'm going to create a new project. And I have a choice of languages. So there are a few kind of uh, me too, you know, uh, little languages like C, C++, uh, uh, Java, and, and so on. But we are among grown ups, so uh, let's take something serious like uh, iPhone, for example. <laughs> <laughs> and the project name is going to be. Okay, and then it, it generates a, a, a little a template of a project, which I'm going to open in the IDE, and it only has one file, uh, which is Hello World. Uh, so, hello from Tyrol. Well, in English, I think it's as a Y. Okay. okay, so all this is running on our uh, <coughs> data center, which is a laptop in uh, Christian's uh, office. 
<laughs> so you can see that it compiled everything. These are the normal messages from, from the uh, IFO compiler, and now we can run it. And uh, well, those of you who are close enough can see that it, here it says what it's supposed to say uh, hello from uh, to Rock. So this is the online uh, pro programming. Now, all that's needed is this URL here, which is codeboard io slash project slash 1140, which is the number that has been given to this project. So now I'm going to go to another browser. I, uh, uh, as probably most of you, I don't use Internet Explorer very much, but <coughs> Internet Explorer has its users. So if you want to share the project with someone else, you just give in the URL, uh, and that's it. Um, OK, so now I'm going to do something a uh, little uh, different, I'm going to close this project. Uh, or would I uh, close it? Okay. Project, I guess. Exit. And I'm going to open an existing project. So this is the palindrome <coughs> uh, project. So it's, it's a programming exercise to, to find if a project has uh, been um, <coughs> if a string is a palindrome, you know, it can be right identically from left to right, <coughs> right to left. And this is actually the instructor's view. Okay? And so there are classes uh, plus control files. This is the control file. Uh, and this is, this is what the student would have to, to fill in. But there's also the whole uh, test driver behind it. I think I can be bigger. Ah. Too, not too big because then we don't see anything anymore. Okay, so this is where. <coughs> no, that's the other one. Uh, programming on, uh, on a uh, small, small resolution. Uh, uh, yeah. Small resolution uh, monitor is a challenge. So this is this is where you would have as a student to fill in your code. Um, okay, so now I, I can uh, compile and run the, 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 the program. So, well, I'm going to, uh, to, to be to cheat, right? I'm going to say if result, if, sorry, s, the string, is equal to a, b, b, a, then result is true. Test-driven development, right? That's what it is. <laughs> this is good. Okay, and now I'm going to. Oh, I really don't uh, need to put more space. How do I compile? I'm running into a problem because of uh, um, uh, yeah, to compile. Okay, it, it's it's here, um, staring at me, and I'll run. I guess as soon as it compiled. Uh, oh, oh, of course, demo effect. Why isn't it compiled? This is quite interesting. Okay, never mind. Uh, now I'm going to go to uh, the, uh, the, the submissions. Apart, I don't know what's on compiling. It is some uh, stupid technical issue, uh, the typical demo effect. So I'm not going to try to compile it, but you, you'll believe me that <coughs> it has compiled before. And here you can see uh, the, the instructor's view. So the, the students, of course, cannot see this, but you can see that I've tried this a few, ta a few times uh, just to prepare for this uh, talk, obviously not uh, uh, well enough, but th these are what the very students uh, have done. So this is me earlier on, demo 2, anonymous, and I guess this is probably uh, me again. Uh, no, uh, this is now. So, and, and then I can see exactly, uh, now I'm the instructor, and I can see what the student did. And so this has made our interaction with the students completely different from what it was before. Because if we have a student who is trying to do a programming 
exercise in a traditional context, especially if you're not physically with a student, if it's a MOOC, for example, if it's remote instruction, then you have to exchange five or six emails. What do you do? Uh, can you ch well, well, uh, give me your program text? In line six, I see this. <coughs> it's not line six, it's line seven. Here, we see exactly what the student has done, and, and we can tell him uh, what the error uh, was, and, uh, and, and, and help him directly. And so we've complete, completely integrated this with the uh, MX course. So if you, if you go to this course uh, here, inside the course, uh, that's part of the edX, uh, you can see it's, uh, it's not our uh, URL, it's the edX. edX is this consortium of universities that provides online training led by MIT and Berkeley. And we have integrated this into the course. Uh, so people, when students go to the exercise pages, well, they have the same thing. They, they have the, this built in because there is a uh, mechanism. So th there's a mechanism that makes it possible to integrate CodeBoard with <coughs> the uh, standard format for MOOCs. <coughs> All the providers of MOOCs, um, Moodle, uh, Coursera, <coughs> edX, and the others have agreed on a kind of interchange format, and so we generate that, and that's also what enables us to support various programming languages like Java, C, C++, and so on. So it's very easy to integrate a <coughs> a, a programming language and a set of programming exercises into a course. A number of people are doing courses for edX in particular, uh, but also at ETH in completely different areas from, from ours have started doing this. And uh, this seems to be a much more active, a much more also interactive and uh, lively and interesting way to teach programming than the standard lecture style or even online exercises that do not have this kind of, of support. So uh, as a summary, the, uh, software development is crying <coughs> for cloud support, but we're not there <coughs> yet. Uh, commit and update are not for humans, but that's the other part of the, uh, of the uh, of the research effort and the application to teaching, in particular to the teaching of programming, uh, seem to be the uh, most immediately uh, useful and most uh, exciting ones uh, today. But I'm really interested in a, a bit more of uh, feedback, both from those of you in academia and those in industry. So, thank you very much. Thank you.